Hi, it's Adam from Zero Friction Cycling. Uh, welcome to episode two. Uh, so today uh, we're going to be talking uh, just about the different lubricant types. So I'm starting my episodes right at the beginning really and we're gonna work our way through some really fun education. So lubricant types, um, most of you would have heard of wet lubes. So wet lubes make up probably the majority of lubricants on the market. Uh, you will have heard of dry lubes. So in dry lubes, there are two main types. There are your sort of older style, traditional dry lubes, such as say a muck off dry, a finish line dry. And then there's now the really the new generation dry lubes, which are more of what we call a chain coating type lubricant. So these are lubricants that set to basically a true solid on your chain, um, really sort of trying to emulate immersive uh, waxing in a bottle. Uh, we have immersive waxing as, uh, as a lubricant type. And what I'm going to do is, um, as I go through these types, I'm going to be running through, I guess, the main pros and cons so that you get a bit of an understanding on, you know, is this lubricant type for me or is this lubricant type, you know, not really suited to my type of riding and, or, you know, I'm using X at the moment and should I consider transitioning over to, you know, Y different lubricant. So I'm going to start with the traditional dry lubricants because uh, these are sort of, I guess, what I would call your older style uh, lubricants. And... Really, most of them have proven to be pretty poor. So going back to the Friction Facts days, all the dry lubricants that were tested um, had you know, all pretty much always in the highest friction bracket. And the, the reason being is that basically they are mostly a carrier with a little bit of lubricant uh, inside them. The carrier evaporates off, so your chain looks nice and clean, but there's just so little lubricant that's actually going into your chain that really unless you're putting sort of half a bottle on you know, for the for the you know every sort of short ride, really your chain wear rates are going to be very high. So they're kind of a lubricant where I guess beauty is only skin deep. So I haven't seen one yet, and I, I get to see a lot of customers' uh, bikes come in, and I always check their chain wear, ask them, and we usually find out sort of around how many kilometres that they have done on on that chain, and and marry up the sort of lubricant to the wear rate. So aside from I guess you know actual test data or control test data, we've also got quite a lot of real world customer data that, that you know, I haven't seen one yet without atrocious wear rates. So my advice is covering off your traditional dry lubes is avoid. They are nothing like the latest generation chain coating type lubricants, which I'll uh, expand on a bit more soon. Uh, so then really the main, other main type is wet lubricants. Um, now wet lubricants are, I guess your most common type. Uh, they're probably what most people are most familiar with. So it's something that you can just drip from the bottle onto your chain. You know, people wipe their chain and away they go. And there's a huge variance in performance of wet lubricants. So some wet lubricants you know, can be quite high performing for a good period. Some are okay and then some are you know, quite poor. Now, the amount of testing done, even though I've done a huge amount of testing, to actually, because my testing takes uh, quite a long time, to actually get through um, all the lubricants takes, takes ages. So really the i guess the testing side of wet lubricants there's there's probably a lot more really i guess or, or wet lubricants in the high performing class that i haven't got to testing yet so i'll talk about i guess some of the the leading ones um, and the advantages of those versus uh, a poor one but i'm also you'll, you'll see i guess or hear some data about you know if you ride in certain applications like off-road or in harsh conditions you know is a wet lubricant going to be for you so at the moment in the wet lubricant world, the top wet lubricant tested thus far has been Silky Synergetic, which has knocked off the previous top wet lubricant, which was one called Nix Friction. Uh, and the reason why uh, this is uh, has become the top wet lubricant, and uh, I'll be doing more detailed reviews on these uh, down the track, but basically, apart from the fact that it's, it, it is proven, it's extremely low friction, and it's the first wet lubricant to record basically zero wear through the first block of, of the zero friction cycling testing is that you need so little of it to last a very long time that it will stay a lot cleaner than uh, most other wet lubricants. And that was the secret behind Nix Friction as well. Um, so the thing with wet lubricants though, is that you're if you're going to be riding in the world of dirt and dust, you know, dirt and dust will stick to a wet chain on contact. So there's really no getting around that. So if you ride off-road um, and or frequently in sort of pretty harsh conditions, then wet lubricants is going to be something I guess I'll be asking you to have a bit of a think about, is that going to be the right choice for you? Because the maintenance level can be quite high to keep them low friction and clean. So moving to then, we've got our, I guess, our chain coating type lubricants and our immersive waxing. So chain coating type lubricants, so 
especially in the in the uh, the banner of your true tension tungsten all weather, your uh, UFO and your Silka. So really, they they're doing the best job possible to try to put immersive waxing into a bottle. So they're basically the top blend of waxes and friction modifiers. Uh, they're in a carrier and that carrier does evaporate off kind of like the dry lubes, but what's left behind is a solid coating layer on your chain that's very low friction. And because it's a solid coating, it's extremely contamination resistant. So it's, you know, if you've got a solid lubricant on your chain, it's going to resist you know, dusts and particles and so on, obviously a lot better than you know, something wet where it's going to stick on in contact. And so these lubricants have you know, tested and proven uh, to be one, very low friction, and two, extremely low wear. And three, they just remain super clean for very long, you know, for very long periods. So they're, uh, I guess, a main, you know, a top main lubricant choice. And then immersive waxing, I'm going to be expanding uh, in a future video a lot more on immersive waxing because it's a bit of a deep topic. Uh, it can be a little bit divisive, so it's going to be a fun one to cover properly. But immersive waxing, pretty much you're melting a, a wax down in a pot, putting your chain in a nice bath of wax, and then it comes out coated in a nice, super slippery, solid coating, and things are magnificent if you've got a top quality wax for a good stretch. Um, there's one last type, which I haven't sort of got listed here because I've actually sold out of that type at the moment, but um, there's what's called wax emulsion lubes, which um, I guess the generation kind of before your chain coating type lubricants, uh, the top ones I'll list off there would be Smooth and Squirt. So they are, they are I guess, similar. They're, they are a wax in a, in a carrier, which um, when it evaporates off, it's not a true solid or chain coating like these lubricants, but they are a very contamination resistant and high performing uh, product in themselves. So they, they do have some uh, tricky sides to them. So those type of lubricants typically have some initial penetration issues. So there's a bit of work involved in making sure they do penetrate properly, whereas the other ones uh, that, that we've listed there, the latest generation really, really don't. They just get straight in. Um, and so they can be a little bit more tricky on the maintenance side. Um, and uh, that is something I guess I'm going to expand upon further in episode three, which is going to be about um, the maintenance uh, that's required for the main type. So you can, I guess that's going to help you further decide which is the right lubricant type for you for your type of writing. But yeah, episode two, just a quick cover off on what are our main lubricant types and start the wheels turning on. Yeah, which one's going to suit your riding if you're a road, mountain bike, always riding in wet weather, which one's going to be right for you. So look for episode three where I'm going to run through them a bit more in depth and what maintenance is required to keep them low friction if that's your lubricant choice and you're riding in those type of conditions. So that'll do for episode two. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel and other YouTube type things like share with your friends. Uh, so that'll keep you up to date with the latest low friction news and hints and tips. And um, yeah, also put any comments down below and I can uh, try to look at those and uh, take them into account for future episodes.